Hey everyone, it's Zeraldo here, and today I'm here to talk to you about the Blade Master class. It was only just released a couple of hours ago. Uh, it's Dage's birthday class. This has come earlier than the rest of his birthday items. There will be another Paragon pet, which I will do a video on. But uh, yeah, here's the guide. Uh, I've actually already made the rest of the guide, as you can see. I'm filming the intro last, funnily enough. Uh, also, just thank you so much. I've made it to 5,000 subscribers. Uh, I'm really, really pleased about that, and I'll be doing a sort of thank you video at some point. No idea what it's going to be or how it's going to work, so it'll probably be more like 5,500 subscribers by then. But just so you know right now, I'm really thankful, and thank you so much for the support, and I hope you enjoy today's guide. So now I'm just going to show you how you get the class. There are two ways to obtain the class. The first is to go to the birthday shop and just simply buy the Blade Master class or 2000 Adventure Coins. Now there are some nice weapons that actually go with the class for free players, members, Adventure Coin holders, and more Adventure Coin holders, so we'll go with this one because this is the one I want. Uh, if you don't want to spend ACs on the class itself, you can go to the Legion Quest, becoming a Blade Master. Um, you just need Legion tokens for this and you just accept the quest, turn in, and you get the class. Uh, if you've got enough Legion tokens, that's not a problem. If you need more, well, this is going to be around for a month, roughly, from release, so you've still got a lot of time. Uh, there will be a new Paragon pet coming out, so quests will be giving a lot of Legion tokens. So it shouldn't be too hard if you've got a whole month and you've got a pet. For enhancements, you'll basically want to go full thief. Now, because of the um, few crits this class does, it might be worth going for a bit of luck, but really, you want to maximize your advantage. So go for full thief. Now, with full thief, you have a 20% crit chance, large haste, very large evasion, and good hit chance. Uh, just tell you about the passives quickly. 20% increase to critical strike. One of the moves also boosts how often you crit. This is crit damage and dodge chance by 15%. The other one just increases dex. Now that's why you want to have such high dex for a bigger increase. The rank 10 passive also increases dex by 10% and crit, not crit damage, just overall damage by 10%. So you really want to go for your advantage. Not only that, it's a rogue base model. Um, apparently the class isn't finished. Needs a description. I don't know if that's because they haven't finished making it or if they just forgot to put in a description, but we'll find out soon enough. Um, but yeah, the, it's a rogue base model, so it gains mana when they strike an enemy in combat, and it gives you more back on crits, but also dodge any attack, and you also get HP back. So, dodge chance is paramount to success. Um, in terms of your aura enhancements, because this class has no heal, you may want to consider going with the mana vamp. Now, uh, not mana vamp, um, health vamp, sorry. Uh, this will make you a pain in PvP because people think they've gotten your health down and then you just suddenly do a heal. Uh, there is a bit of crit stuff, so maybe Spiral Carve, um, if you want to bolster that. But the class does have one potential weakness, and that's mana management. The um, final move can suck out a lot of mana. So if you want to just do damage as opposed to survivability, go for mana vamp. So those are the enhancement suggestions. Let's see the class in action now. For this class guide, I've decided to go with the uh, weapon that sort of comes with the class. It's quite an unstable damage range, so just bear that in mind. You can make it a lot more unstable, you can make it a lot more stable. If you want to see what this class looks like with a stable damage range and get a full idea of the averages, take a look at the uh, video I'm doing documenting the passives, and that'll be out later today, hopefully. And I'll have a link to it in the description and stuff. Uh, now, this class has a fast sort of attack cycle. Uh, 1.75 seconds instead of 2. There's my um, aura enhancement activated. Uh, and, uh, yeah, there's not much more to it than that. You've got Blade Fury, which is 15 mana, has a 9 second cooldown. It's an uh, area of effect move, which uh, can affect up to 4 enemies. You can't just use this to go straight into combat. You've actually got to attack an enemy first, so bear that in mind. Uh, it's It does a fair amount of damage. It does more damage than uh, your third move, which is single target. Now, how this works is that you've got several enemies attacking you at once, so hopefully you're gaining mana from all the dodging you're doing, and your health shouldn't go
go down too much because you get health back when you dodge, which is the uh, beauty of these dodge classes. Uh, the second move is just an effect. It's, it's evasion. Increases your uh, dodge by 20% and your chance to critical hit by 10, so it's quite nice. It lasts for, I think, about 20 seconds. Uh, so it's about 5 seconds where it won't be on. You really want to keep this move going at all times. The more dodging you do, the more MP you get back, the more health you're getting back, and the less you're actually taking damage. Plus your crits will be a bit more powerful. This is really, really something you want. Uh, the third move is actually a bit of a non-event. It's just 25 mana and a 9 second cooldown. It does damage a little bit higher than your auto attack. I mean, if you really want to be using it for a total damage output, maybe in PvP where you've got single target, but even then this is more powerful and you won't get extra targets. Uh, I mean, it's there. Um, the cooldown's a bit harsh for how um, strong the move is, so that's okay. The uh, really cool thing is the final move here. It's a 10 second cooldown and it's a nuke. There you go. Um, that was actually relatively low hit for it because of the unstable damage range uh, yeah it's not I have to use it a few times uh, if you're noticing this though uh, I've used the nuke oh wow why is it doing such low damage I've used the nuke three times in a relatively short amount of time um, just just I, I feel like I need to say it here on a stable damage range, the average damage for this, sh oh there we go, should be about 870, roughly, at level 60. So, yeah, there you go. Um, it's got a 10 second cooldown, so this thing can be used a lot, but the mana cost might be a problem. So you can see I've got ore enhancements here to counteract the mana cost. Now, for doing damage, as I've probably said, you want that spiral, I mean, doing damage, you want mana vamp, get all the mana and just keep spamming it. Spiral Carve might do well for the crits, and Health Vamp will be better for the dodging sort of thing, because that'll keep you alive for longer. But uh, I'm just covering the weakness, really, not um, bolstering the strengths. Uh, I'll do the rank 10 passive in a video, and there'll be a link to the description now. Uh, there aren't any tricky combos or anything, just remember to keep this move here, your second move, going at all times. And maybe think about mana conservation, so you can keep spamming this move here and doing large amounts of damage. It's quite interesting for a dodge class to be doing quite so much damage. Um, the rank 10 passive will improve this, as it will give 10% extra damage and 10% dex on more dodging. Uh, yeah. So, that's all there really is to say on this class. It's a really nice little class, and it is going to go rare. So make sure you grab it while you can, and there are some nice little weapons that go with it. Uh, definitely a dodge class worth getting.